What's going down, church? I love y'all. How y'all been? Good? Good. I want to go ahead and give a shout out to Sullivan, to Charleston, to Bloomington, to Muhammad. Welcome them to, can we welcome them to church? One church, many locations. Welcome them. Welcome them. Thank you. Thank you. And then you're live checking us out. We appreciate it. I want to talk about what's on most of your minds right now. And that's what happened last night in Green Street. It was crazy. I mean, apparently um, a fight took place and it went to guns and people got shot. Someone lost their life last night. Another person, not confirmed, but I, we think it was reported that another person also lost his life too. One person ran and, and got hit by a car, sustained injuries. I mean, it, it, it's madness. You take that and then what's going on in Tulsa, what's going on in Charlotte, my home state, man. And then you got um, Aleppo in Syria. I mean, it's madness. You can look at the news and get seriously depressed. You can look at the news and get seriously scared and shook. But real, you know what? Thank God that we got the comforter inside of us. Thank God that we have the hope of glory inside of us. Thank God that we have he that's greater than us than he that's in the world. Because if we didn't, then we'd all be a mess. We'd all be a mess. And people ask, you know what, I got a college crew right here. If you're in college, if you go to U of I, or you have a professor at U of I, raise your hand for me real quick. Okay, here's the deal. Put your hand out. I'm commissioning you right now to be salt and light. I'm commissioning you right now to be a salt and light because the church needs to continue to wake up, to pray, and to be emboldened to be a salt and light in the world today. Because this is not a game. It's a war out there. And we can't afford to be Christians sitting on the sidelines just watching. We need to get in the game and start getting involved and being the salt and light and crushing darkness by shining a light on it. I could preach for a minute, y'all, on this thing. This has got me hype. It got me hype. What can we do? What can we do? I already said pray, pray. But we can also pray for Tulsa, pray for Charlotte, pray for the government, pray for the police. Pray for the civilians. Pray for the families of the victims. Pray. And then pray, too, that you can reveal more of him. You can reveal more of Jesus. Pray. And then, too, reach out to other people for, in understanding. Reach out to understand what's going on, the perspectives of your brothers and sisters. You know, if you're Caucasian, reach out to the African-American or Latino population. I don't know. Someone that you trust. And, and reach out for understanding, vice versa. Vice versa. African-Americans, Latinos, reach out to the Caucasian population for understanding. And may, they may have some things that they want to share with you, but they can't, they can't, they don't feel like they have a voice at the table or something, whatever. But we're all in this as a family, y'all. We are a church, but we are family. So we must be real and, 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 and start to open up by seeking to understand. Okay, I just burned about five minutes of my time, but you know what, rightfully so. So don't get mad at me when I'm five minutes over, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we, we, we ask you to come in full measure. We're in a series called Hello Holy Spirit, but we also say, embolden us, Holy Spirit. Comfort us, Holy Spirit. Help us to, 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 to reveal more of Jesus more than ever before here in Champaign-Urbana and beyond. May your church rise up because your Holy Spirit is activated in such a way that it looks more like heaven than ever before. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Okay, here we go. We are in the second week of the series, Hello, Holy Spirit. Di, she, brought it down, she put it down when she talked about who is the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Di, for being real. Thank you, Di, for taking your time to bring this series into light. It's because of Di, lame and y'all, that we are doing this series because she stayed true to who she is. So wherever you are, Di, I salute you. Thank you. We honor you. But she brought it in, and if you want to see her message, you didn't see her message, go to vineyardlive.us. Check it out. We, we have all our messages there. You can check them out anytime. You should check that one out. This week, the message is help. What do you do, Holy Spirit? 
What do you do? So let me pray that the message resonates. Holy Spirit, just come, use me as a conduit to what you want to do. Use me as the vessel to how you want to minister and what you want to teach today. <laughs> we ask in your name, Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so have you ever asked yourself, man, what role does the Holy Spirit play in my life? What role does he play, period? I mean, what does the Holy Spirit do? What's his job description? I mean, I think I know what Father God does. He created the world in six days. He created man. He created human beings. And he sent his begotten son to the world. And I, okay, I think I know what Jesus, the son, did. He, he was 100% man and 100% God, okay. And he lived the perfect life that no one could live. He, he fulfilled the Mosaic law that no one can fulfill. He died the perfect death that no one could die. And now he raised from the grave himself, and now he's seated at the right hand of the Father as king of the world because of what he did. He made a way for us to live in eternal bliss with God. Oh my goodness. Wait, wait, wait. By the way, if you don't know that story, if you haven't yet said yes to Jesus and made him your personal Lord, please don't leave here today without making that happen. You know what, Charleston Sullivan, I'm talking to you as well too. I'm talking to Muhammad. I'm talking to Bloomington as well. Vineyard Live. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord, don't be, don't, don't stop tripping. Make that decision today. He wants you to come in on the, in the family. So anyways, he, so I know what, what the father did. I think I know what Jesus, the son did, but what in the heck does the Holy Spirit do? When I was um, uh, nine years ago, back in the day, I gave my life and I professed that, you know, I'm going to live for Jesus all of my days. But you know what, after that, I said, you know what, it's up to me to be a good Christian now. It's up to me to read my Bible, to go to church now. It's up to me, and it's by my willpower I will obey everything he does. You see, I was striving and trying to be a good son rather than allowing in being, just being a good son and allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to allow me to be a good son. See, there's a major, major difference there. I was relying on the willpower of my willpower rather than the Spirit's power. I was relying on my work rather than the finished work. And one of the many indicators that I was relying on me rather than him is because I would always struggle with sin. Over and over again, I would struggle with sin. For instance, take parenting, for example. I would say to myself, you know what? I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to lose my cool. I'm not going to yell. The next thing you know, my kids accidentally spilled some milk, and I'm losing my cool over some spilled milk. And I'm like, oh, man, I did it again. I've lost my cool. Or, for instance, um, say I, I, I'm not going to get moody. I'll say to myself, I'm not going to get moody. I'm not, I'm not going to have an attitude. I'm not going to allow to get, I'm not going to get emotionally worked up. And next thing you know, something happens and it puts me in this foul mood. I, I, I caught a feeling or something, and I'm now I'm in a mood again. And I'm like, what is going on? I know what's going on. I'm not allowing the Holy Spirit to do what only he can do. And we probably find ourselves caught in this type of pattern, if we're being honest. It could be that you're in a pattern of sin. You're, you're, in a, you're, in a, you're struggling with, you know, doing things over and over and over again that's sinful in your life. It could be that you keep falling victim to a specific lie the enemy puts out there to hook you. It could be that your life looks like a WWE episode gone awry because life is just kicking your tail. It, it could be that, you know, you feel stuck. I'm, I'm just stuck. I can't hear you, God, like I used to. I don't feel you, God, like I used to. I don't have the passion like I once had. It's real. And if any of these scenarios play out, you can resonate with, it's probably because we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to be the Holy Spirit in our life. It's probably because we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to do what only he can do best, which is lead us, guide us into all the truth. Okay, Clay, guide us in the truth? I mean, what, what's that mean? Let me unpack that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Scripture, and we're going to talk about what Jesus said, the, the Holy Spirit, one of the Holy Spirit, um, a job description, if you will, of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk a little bit about that, and then I'm going to bring up three areas in, in ways he guides us into truth. 
okay? I'm only going to focus on three because if I focus on everything the Holy Spirit did, we'd be here for a few hours and y'all be mad at me walking out because y'all hungry, okay? So I, I love y'all, so I'm going to try, try to keep it succinct, okay? Turn with me to John 16, 7. John 16, 7. Here's what he says. He says, Jesus says this, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Okay, so Jesus is calling the Holy Spirit helper. We talked about that last week, how Holy Spirit's like the helper. In the Greek, it's parakletos. I kind of like saying paraclete. It comes off my tongue a lot easier. Okay, so, so what, what's, what's parakletos? What the, what's the paraclete? A paraclete is a person called to one's aid. Uh, uh, called to intercede, excuse me, called to intercede on behalf of another, called to plead the case of another. So y'all listen, the Holy Spirit is God on earth, helping us to look more, act more, become more like Jesus the Christ. <sighs> That's so good. Oh my goodness, that deserves an amen. Y'all looking at me like, huh? I'm playing. I love y'all. Third, verse 13, what it says this, he says this, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And whatever he will declare to you, and whatever he will declare to you, the things, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Okay, so here it is. He's going to declare all the things that are to come. I love, y'all, how he's interceding. He's interceding. You heard that the Holy Spirit was a genius at life, but I'm here to say that the Holy Spirit is a genius at pleading our case, at defending us. Every time the accuser comes, he defends our case. He makes sure that we know, he, that God knows. And listen, he is in the blood, so he is good. He is good. Even though he's struggling in sin, even though he keeps, you know, messing up, he is justified just if he had not sinned. And if you are not in Christ, listen, you need the bomb lawyer on your side. You need perfect legal representation. Trust me. Trust me. You need that. So if you don't know Jesus, please make the move today to go all in for him. So the Holy Spirit is helper, helping us to look like, act like, more like Christ. So here it is. He will guide us into all the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me, Holy Spirit. So, so, so here it is, so here it is. And, and he wants us to look more like Jesus in every way, that he's going to take us by the hand and guide us into all the truth. And not only is he aiding us when we need aid, not only is he helping us when we need help, not only is he the paraclete that's going to help us back on our feet whenever we stumble and sin, which, you know, happens from time to time, he's going to help us back on our feet. Not only is he going to plead our case and say, you know what, I've helped him back on his feet. He's good. He's, he's purchased by the blood. He's, he's good. You know what? No one, no, 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 um, not only will he plead our case, but he's also focusing us on Jesus. He's saying, hey, look and keep your eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he wants us to move from glory to glory. He wants us to move from breakthrough to breakthrough. He wants us to move from mountaintop to mountaintop so we can live victorious over sin. Hallelujah. Holla back. Oh, my goodness. This is where it's at right here. We have a witness. We have a helper to help us stay more like Jesus. So how does he do this? How does he do this? One, he teaches and reveals more Jesus. He teaches and reveals more more of Jesus. Jesus was quoted to have said the following in John 14, 26. He says this, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance everything that I've said. And check this out. In John 15, 26, he says this, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. Spirit of truth is basically the Holy Spirit. He's another name for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. He will bear witness about me. 
He will bear witness. Okay, so what he's doing is he's teaching all things that Jesus taught. And he's bearing witness of all things. about. He's always pointing to Jesus. He say, hey, you know what? Remember when Jesus did this? Hey, remember when Jesus did that? Hey, we can reveal Jesus like this. We can reveal Jesus like that. Oh, oh yeah, you don't understand this? Let me teach you what Jesus meant when he said this. Let me teach you a little more about what Jesus meant when he said that. He's teaching and revealing and bearing witness about Jesus. And it's crazy how the spirit of truth is bearing witness of the truth. It's all truth, man. It's crazy. My, my boy Josh Hasbargan, a friend of mine and a member and a leader of this church, has this to say about the relationship of the Holy Spirit. After I gave my life to Christ, I had the Holy Spirit show me the truth on all things in my life. It was during this time the Holy Spirit instantly freed me from anger, rejection, shame, alcoholism, addictions to porn. Come on, Josh. He took me on a 40-day journey of trust. I built a fortress of being dependent on myself. He said, let me love you. Let me show you who you really are, and I will teach you about forgiveness, love, joy, and hope. I will teach you who Jesus is so you can be more like him. Now, at this junction of my life, I knew nothing of the Bible or the gospel, but allowed the Holy Spirit to teach me how to read and understand the Bible. He gave me the desire to read Scripture, how to journal, how to be a son with whom he's pleased with. He also gave me the desire to go back to school and build healthy, loving relationships with my parents, brother, and every person in my life. Each time I was in a conversation with the Holy Spirit, I would hear, Joshua, do you trust me? To this very day, I'm on my way of finishing my degree in Christian ministry. I recently completed the School of Kingdom Ministry. I served as one of the teachers and worship leaders in Kingdom Kids. And I've been asked by Clay for the second year in a row to serve as a leader in Alpha. I'm growing more in love with Jesus every day as I trust the Holy Spirit. Wow, Josh, I salute you, my friend. That's what's up. Good job. Thanks for sharing the testimony. Thanks for sharing your testimony. Josh, y'all, trusted Holy Spirit to do what only he can set out to do, which is to teach and reveal more Jesus. And because he trusted Holy Spirit, he's doing big things. He's doing amazing things right now in the kingdom. And the same thing that the Holy Spirit did for Josh, he wants to do with each and every one of us here. He ain't done yet. Even if the Holy Spirit is doing amazing things with you, he wants to do even more with you. So the next time you're reading your Bible, I dare you, I double dog dare you to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, will you open the eyes of my heart? So not only do I understand scripture, that I can apply the scripture to my life. And I can guarantee you something will happen. One or two things will happen. He will illuminate you in such a way that you will be a hot mess. And one or two things. One, the love of Jesus will just come pouring because you understand his love in a new way. You're just undone. You're just probably going to start snotting up, tearing up and all that. Like, oh God! Second thing he might be doing, he, he'll do, is illuminate scripture in such a way that you're connecting things that you never thought were to be connected. And he's like, oh my goodness, mind blown. What is going on? I did not see that in Scripture. He will illuminate Scripture for you. I dare you to invite Holy Spirit to do life with you on an everyday, mundane, routine level. You know, ask Holy Spirit to reveal more Jesus with how you relate to your boss. Some of y'all are like, I don't know about that. <laughs> ask him to reveal more Jesus on how I handle my finances, on how I handle how my kid just got bullied at school, God. How I can handle all relationships. How I spend my free time. Ask the Holy Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit in. So if you really want the Holy Spirit to be your guide, if you really want the Holy Spirit to lead us in all truth, get ready for the ride of your life. So, Holy Spirit leads us, guides us into all truth by, one, teaches and reveals more Jesus. Two, he also comforts us. He comforts us. He comforts us. And I'm not talking about the comfort that lives the void of risk and sacrifice. Y'all, Christians have to 
more often than not, be willing to roll up their sleeves and get busy being the person that God made you to be. Come on, man. You know, we, we, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and get busy with this thing and, and work at, at this. Not, not that it's about works, but it's about sometimes being uncomfortably comfortable as you take risk and leaning into what the Holy Spirit wants, us, wants you to do. The comfort I'm talking about, guys, is the comfort that comes in trying times. The comfort that comes on the battlefield. The comfort that comes when we're staring fear in the face. When we're staring the obstacles in the face, the giants in the face, and we say, you know what? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I'm good. I'm comforted. And I'm coming at the fear. I'm coming at the problems. I'm coming at those obstacles because you know what? I have a victor living in me. Come on, man. So, Acts 16, 22 through 25, as it reads this, check it out. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas. Listen, when we are out doing the works of the kingdom, we're going to have, we're going to have opposition. It's just what happens, guys. Some of us, we feel the slightest little fleck on our arm. We're like, oh no, I don't want to do that no more. Yeah, listen, we got to press in sometimes. So a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. Oh my goodness. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them in the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Paul and Silas aren't having the best day. <laughs> They're unjustly beaten. Pretty bad. I mean, I'm sure they're all bloodied up and in miserable, in miserable pain. I mean, this is not good for them. They're, they're wrongfully accused. They're wrongfully in prison. They're, they're wrongfully beaten. And they're in a dank dungeon with shackles on their feet. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. But then, then, the audacity of the next verse. Check what it says. It says this. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. People are watching. People are watching Christians in the midst of their suffering, in the midst of their pain, in crisis. People are watching how we respond to Tulsa. People are watching how we respond to Charlotte, how we respond to Green Street, what happened last night, this morning. People are watching, y'all. What, what are we going to manifest? The God of this world, the God the, uh, Jesus Christ, or are we going to manifest the God of this world? Ask yourself those questions. Who are we manifesting? But people are watching. And here they, they said that they're watching, and they're singing praises despite their misery. They're singing and worshiping God despite their pain. They're praying and singing praises despite their crazy circumstances. Why? Why do they have the nerve to do all this? Because they are allowing Holy Spirit to minister to them comfort. And as they're ministered comfort, they're comforting the whole jail. What? My goodness, this is nuts. So Holy Spirit wants us to provide comfort to us. Why would the comfort come, comforter come when we're already comfortable? The Holy Spirit wants to provide comfort during trying times. So now we can manifest Christ. Remember, Jesus told them, if I go, he will come. He, meaning the Holy Spirit, will come and will lead you into all the truth. And bam, the Holy Spirit came with Paul, to Paul and Silas and led them to the truth of the matter that everything's going to be all right. Every little thing is going to be all right. That's what the Holy Spirit said, right? He said, don't worry about a thing. Because if you're in me, if you're in fellowship with God, if you're in fellowship and communion with God, if you have the God of this world, the God um, in heaven, in you, and you in him, then you know what? Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Holy Spirit wants to access, it wants access to us 24-7, 365. Even when we're, when we're down, when we're out, you know, he wants access to us. Check out this clip from my homegirl, Tasha from um, week two of the Holy Holy Spirit small group video. She's going to explain how to, she needs the Holy Spirit through every area of her life. Run that clip real quick. I stay home for time with my, my small, small children, children, so my life is very practical and some days very mundane. 
Most days are full of the challenges with the ups and downs of mothering. I have always prided myself on being independent and self-sufficient, doing things on my own, I'm a go-getter. But about five years ago, I found that trying to do life on my own terms and in my own strength led me to some stress-related health issues. I started having anxiety issues, panic attacks. I found myself in the emergency room more than once. I had so much fatigue and so much tiredness that I had to actually hire a full-time nanny that summer to help me take care of my children. I realized then that my way of trying to do it on my own definitely was not working for me and that I definitely needed to make some changes. I reflected on some of these changes and it's clear that one of the biggest changes in my life has been my relationship with the Holy Spirit. All right, and if you want to see how the Holy Spirit pulled her through the storm, then go to the small group and check it out, all right? And if you're not in small group, what's really going on? Come on, man. Can you give me, uh, Sullivan, I'm talking to you too. Muhammad, you know, um, Charleston, you know, all the campuses. Then you're live. You got an online small group study going on too. There's no excuse for us not to be a part of a group. Get to be, you know, it will change your life. Can you commit to that? It will change your life. It will change the way you think. Listen, the Holy Spirit wants to bring comfort in every situation. Why do y'all think he has prepared a table in the presence of enemies? We, we are, if you are in the presence of enemies, guess what? You got a table there, a buffet. And what happens at a buffet table? You're chilling. You're good. You're lunching, man. You're laughing with the Spirit, man. You're, you don't have a care in the world what the enemies are doing around you because you're comforted. And sometimes I can feel like I'm suffering for, for the gospel like Paul and Silas did in jail. And man, I, you know, even though it's not like that, I sometimes feel that way. You know, I had a hard day. You know, everything is just rough for me. I'm feeling down and out, and I got to go pick up my kids, and we got to ride home, and they're singing in the back like sopranos. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 be quiet back there. I'm driving home. I get home, finally, they're a mess. They don't want to, I cooperate with nothing. And I'm like, all right, fine. You know, it's dinner time. They're throwing food at each other. The older set of twins are yelling at, I mean, I'm laughing at them, egging them on, throwing food at each other. So it's all a mess in the house. And then wifey had the nerve to come home and tell me, hey, why is it so messy in here? I love you, baby girl. You know I love you. You can do, you can do that. You can do that. Okay, that's okay. But, but, but wifey come home and says, hey, why is it a mess? And I'm like, God, will you teleport me now to the beach I was thinking about? He ain't going to do nothing. You know what he's going to do? He's going to comfort me. I'm going to ask him for comfort so he can comfort me. You know why? Because I want the comfort that he gives me to minister to my family in the midst of crisis. People are watching. My family is watching me all the time when I deal with stress so they can model me as I model Christ. Whew. That's a good word, Holy Spirit. Dang. All right, so, 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 you know, it's comfort. You know, and Paul and Silas, if you recall the story, Paul and Silas, when they, when they were praying and singing, what happened is the earthquake came, and the whole jail, it, 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 um, broke, it, it broke to where they can escape. They all can escape. And the jailer thought that he lost, you know, everybody in the jail, so he's about to take his own life. But Paul was like, no, 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 don't take your life. Come down. Let it, look around. We're all good. We're all where we need to be. And the jailer's like, Paul, Silas, you have been singing and praising God in your circumstance. What do you have? Because what you have, I want. He gave his life, Johnny, on the spot right there to Jesus. And then he fixed them up. He cleaned their wounds. And he's like, hey, I want you to come to my house. Preach that gospel to my family because I want my family to have everything that you have. And his whole family gave themselves to Christ, Johnny, on the spot. And hey, that's what happens when we do what we are set out to do, that's what happens. That's a natural, um, that's a natural uh, um, 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 thing that happens. And naturally what happens when well, we have people give their lives to Christ. So people are watching in the midst of crisis, which is, which is why the Holy Spirit wants to provide that comfort in the middle of discomfort. So what we cover so far is this. The Holy Spirit guides us in the truth by teaching and revealing more Jesus. He comforts us. Third, he emboldens us. He emboldens us. In Acts 4, the Holy Spirit um, 
was poured out on the church, and everybody's just dripping and oozing of the Holy Spirit. And so Peter and John, they roll up in the synagogue, and they see a lame beggar, and he gets healed. This lame beggar from birth gets healed, and everybody's like, Dang, what just happened? And everybody's coming out from, and from everywhere to gather around and see what happened. And then Paul and, and um, not, not Paul, I'm sorry, Peter and John, they're preaching the gospel. They're like taking advantage of it, so they're preaching the gospel. And everybody's coming to Jesus left and right. And the priests, they get jealous. And so they, they, they yoke up um, Peter and John, put them in jail, say, you can't preach Jesus. So they went to the council the next morning. And everybody's all serious, like, what were you doing preaching Jesus? And Peter was like, listen, we got to side on God on this one. We got to preach Jesus. That's, that's all we know. That's all we can do. I'm sorry. And I was like, yeah, Peter, what? Anyways, the priests were like, you know what? Uh, we, can't, we can't keep you in jail. But what we are going to do is threaten you. We're going to threaten your life. If you ever preach Jesus again, we're going to threaten your life. Just go home. Don't preach Jesus again. All right, fine. They went home, and they went to their house there where the family and friends were. And this is what they prayed. Check out in Acts 4, 29. This is what they prayed. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. You know what this tells me? This tells me that the leaders of the church of the day the super apostles as they were known, they were scared too. And they knew they needed boldness to do what they were supposed to do. It takes straight faith and courage to do what these guys are doing. And they were like, we can't do this on our own. We need the boldness to come from God himself. And verse 31 says this, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. We need the Holy Spirit to embolden us. We need the Holy Spirit to embolden us. We need the Holy Spirit to embolden us. It is not an option. People ask me, people tell me all the time, yo, Clay, I wish I had your boldness when you go talk to people on the streets about Jesus. And it's flattering and as cool as that sounds, to be honest with you, I'm thinking in my mind, I wish I had my boldness too. Because it's not me, it's God inside of me that's giving me that boldness. I have to ask for an extra measure of boldness. I have to ask for an extra measure of grace when I go and pray for people on the streets every time. Especially when things don't happen. I have to ask for an extra measure of grace when I go to Walmarts, when I go to, when I go to the bars, when I go to anywhere I'm going to minister to people in prayer. I have to ask for an extra measure of boldness when I do that. Because I have to ask for extra measure of boldness when I'm doing anything of God. We need boldness to do what only God can do through us. Through us. So, I'm about to close. How does the Holy Spirit guide us in all truth? He teaches and he reveals more of Jesus. He, he comforts us and he emboldens us. And that's just three of so many things that the Holy Spirit can do and will do for you. But I just want you to marinate on those three things. Ask the Holy Spirit to, 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 to go deeper in those three things right there and see what happens. Listen, church, the Christian life, the Christian life was never meant to live naturally. It was always meant to be supernaturally and be lived supernaturally. We need, we need the Holy Spirit to guide us into more truth. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us into more truth in such a way because we will fall victim and fall for the lie each and every time if we don't have the Holy Spirit guiding us in the truth. The truth of who we are, the truth of who he is, the truth of what we can do. I can go on. We, he needs to guide us in the truth. If we don't have that, we're going to fall for the lie. So here's my action step. My action step is this, really simple. Invite the Holy Spirit to guide, to, to, to guide you into all the truth, all the truth in every area of your life. Every area of your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in the truth, in the every day to day, in the mundane, in the routine, in the little tasks, in the big tasks in the little projects, in the big projects, 
There's nothing too little and detailed. There's nothing too big. You can ask the Holy Spirit to come in and be invited in to help you do it better, more emboldened, more comforted, or to reveal and to teach more Jesus in whatever. So invite him in. Ask him for knowledge. Ask him for wisdom, revelation, understanding. Ask him and you will receive. And don't go asking him like, oh, the Holy Spirit, will you, if you will, I don't know if you will, but if you, no! Go and ask him with expectation. Ask him as though he's going to answer you. Ask him with boldness. And, he, and you will see. Matthew 7, 7 says, knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given. Ask with an anticipation that it's going to happen. Ask. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach and reveal more Jesus to you. To comfort you. To embolden you. Ask. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we knock, we seek, we go in. We're pressing in, Lord, for you. We bless you, Lord God. So may, as we ask, may you continue to release your spirit in fuller measure, Lord. In fuller measure, Lord. As we go about our day-to-day, -day, as we go about the mundane, as we go about all our tasks, our workplace, our, our, our home life, whatever, Lord, break in so we can break out and stand out as a son and a daughter. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, church. Amen.